Hi everyone, I am Nigel Hunt. I am the director of Urban. Um, today, today's talk is going to focus on the production work that uh, Urban does and not the other um, companies that I'm involved in. Uh, but just a quick introduction about myself. So yes, I own um, Urban, which is a, if you like, a phoenix of my old studio, which is called Glowfrog Studios. Um, I am also the CEO and uh, co-founder of Sinai Software, as well as the editor of Three Disciple magazine. Um, plus in the community, I'm involved with, or well, an organizer of three, um, 3DS London, The Rookies, and um, luckily or thankfully, uh, the 24 Hours of Chaos with Chaos Group. So yes, today's agenda, let's have a look at that. So I'm gonna quickly introduce a little bit about myself, about my, the, the background, and then we're going to get into our first uh, Vantage case study, which is Wembley Park, which is a, a master plan or regeneration project in United Kingdom and London. And then we're going to look at the Stack of World project, which is a download a pro downloadable project with uh, Three Disciple magazine that you can download. Uh, at the end of this, I'm going to give you some download links to download uh, from that project, the Vantage scenes in both day and night. Um, and then, yeah, we're gonna wrap up, bit of a conclusion. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So a little bit about me. So <laughs> who, who am I? Where do I come from? I came to the United Kingdom from New Zealand in 1992. So I'd studied architecture in the late 1980s. And I went traveling with my girlfriend. We settled in the United Kingdom. And at the time, this is really at the dawn of, of the computer graphics age. So I'd studied architecture. I was reading the architectural magazines. There were a lot of glossy uh, images that were coming out in the early 90s. And um, I really was persuaded to actually start work. So Hayes Davidson started in 1989. I started a studio there in Green in 1996. And as you can see, more and more studios have come online as the years have gone past. So th these are just UK companies that that have started. So I've really, if you like, seen 30 years of, of architectural visualization and, and how that's changed from the very, very early days. Um, but we're not going to dwell on that uh, today. Uh, I think what I want to do now, let's just jump straight into sharing my screen. Let's just quickly do that from here. Okay, so over the years, having a studio that started in 1996, um, I was very, very keen to actually diversify away from pure architecture. So I built a studio called Glowfrog that specialized in broadcast visual effects and uh, marketing films. So over the years, uh, these are just some of the TV shows, feature films, um, you know, big, big uh, marketing films in, in the Middle East and around the world. Um, so quick slide showing you that. Uh, the other thing we built a reputation for was building cities and big master plans. So you can see from this slide that you know, we, we would build the entire uh, New York, Manhattan Island, rewind that back 300 years, or, you know, in the case of this one down here, that is Dubai Creek Harbor in the UAE, uh, which is an enormous uh, master plan project. Today, though, we're going to talk about Wembley Park. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of master plan work, including Going right back in history, we've got Tudor London, we've got Ancient Rome. Uh, here's one of the shots from a, a Kuwait 2035 vision, 
So this is what we, there weren't any architects involved. We had to actually come up with the concept design, working with the Kuwait Royal family on this. Uh, big master plan project in Shenzhen in China that has 35,000 uh, animated cars. Uh, Dubai Creek Harbor, I don't have time to actually go over this film, so I'll skip over that. And uh, ancient Rome, entire ancient Rome, uh, built and Tudor London so it's great fun working on these projects does involve quite a lot of work involves quite a lot of software script writing hence where Sinai software came from actually making these sorts of projects but that's for a different uh, story altogether back to me that really gives you a background uh, to some of the work that we've covered that everything you saw there was rendered in V-Ray and uh, uh, created in 3D Studio Max. Hence where we're going now with Vantage and the use of Vantage in production. So let's jump straight into that and start to look then at Wembley Park. Okay, so Wembley Park is, as I mentioned before, it's in London. It is the home of British football. But we have been involved in the regeneration project that sits around the stadium itself. So you can see, if I just bring up the pointer here, on the left here, this is an aerial photo from... Uh, 2020. Uh, on the right is the master plan. Uh, there's, it's the largest single site of build to rent homes in the UK. And our client has been working on it for best part of 20 years. So if I jump to the next slide, the stats involved, uh, it's, it's quite a big project. So it's 85 acres, which is 85 football pitches. Uh, we've been involved in on around 90 buildings so far. It's a 25 year project and there's eight and a half thousand homes. So looking at stats that we've been involved in, uh, we've been involved with the job for around 12 years. Uh, we've produced around 750 models and counting. There's live, uh, there's around 200 XREFs, there's around 4,000 V-Ray proxies, and we use, um, yes, we use 3D Studio Max and V-Ray. So th these are just some of the hundreds and hundreds of images we've produced over the years, uh, down to marketing images, interiors, and um, yeah, it, it's very much an ongoing project. The, here's a aerial turntable uh, showing you a chalk render, the V-Ray render in daytime, including all the context uh, model. So we update this regular, or have done over the years, it's been updated quite regularly uh, in both daytime and nighttime, and the client has used this really for informing their stakeholders of of as and when different buildings come online um it's yeah it it's been very much an ongoing uh process but let's just jump forward so in 2019 we were asked to by the client to look at an interactive application some way for their because they're now moving into the sales process, some way for their sales agents to actually interact with the model. Um, now we looked at alternative game engines, uh, but because the, the, as you saw before, the whole asset is a, has been built in 3D Studio Max and V-Ray, um, the cost was so prohibitive to actually move this enormous 30 gig asset from from what we currently have into the game engine that we decided to actually work in a different way. And this 
this has been created in um, Unity, but it's actually camera projecting the V-Ray renders straight into it. But I talked about this at Autodesk University last year, so I'm not going to sort of talk about this much. But you can just see that it's we'd like to stay within V-Ray. It's a very, very fast way of working. We're creating 360 VRs. That The model is so detailed now that as it's being built, the sales agents are using the VR views to actually uh, sell property. So one of the issues that we've all had to address, or a lot of us have had to address over the last year, is the, the issue of working from home because of COVID. Um, uh, most of us, so it's, I'm coming up to almost a year of not actually going into the office. I think I've been in maybe four, maybe five times, but I've had to work from home, um, as have my team. So, and, and I should add, as have our clients and all of their team as well. So we've all had to come up with a way of, of working and collaborating. Now, that becomes incredibly hard when you're trying to share visual ideas or visual media. Um, in the past, the, you would render out a maybe a preview or you would create an image and you send it to your client and then you know, within a period of time, they'll send back a marked up P, um, um, PDF or JPEGs, I've scribbled all over it. It's a very slow process. It's not really collaborative. And I find it incredibly frustrating on a Zoom call when a client's just talking through notes or ideas that you're, you're not getting the whole picture. So we looked at, um, well, we've been looking at what chaos have been doing with uh, Vantage or previously Project Lavina. So we've been experimenting with that for the last two years. Um, COVID has actually, if you like, projected that forward that a year ago when we started having to all work from home, uh, we all had to start using collaborative software such as Slack. Now, uh, my team used Slack. Uh, we, we shared um, screens all the time we're, we're talking continuously as if we're in the same studio together the thing that was missing is that we couldn't actually walk around or or really hands-on explore a, a a scene properly as if you would if you were standing beside or if you're in the same room and you're saying can we just spin the camera around there let's just move that tree around so along comes vantage and it's been a game changer for us so not just for um, our internal team so on a very much a daily basis we're sharing the 3d studio max thing in vantage so we'll share that screen we'll jump straight into vantage and we'll walk around the model and we're starting to discover things because Wembley Park is V-Ray proxy heavy I mean there's thousands and thousands of proxies and the whole scene is optimized so the display format is and we've got everything in box mode so you can't see when you if you're looking at the landscape you can't see anything so the only way to do that now that we have vantage and that forest pack supports vantage is we can actually walk around the scene that you'll see in a second in in real time we can see everything as it should look um, and we can make changes so I can actually be in the Vantage scene um, with the client and that scene is file linked from, from 3D Studio Max so we could stand in the middle of a park and say to one of my team who are also on the Slack call look can you just move the tree around can we add some more people there and we can see that in real time. So let's demonstrate that to you now. I'm going to invite uh, my colleague Fernando to join me so we can actually show you that process. Hopefully it's going to work. Um, yeah, thank you. Hi, Fernando. Hi, Ned. Right, share your screen. Yes. Can you see it? Yeah. I've... 
let me draw on that um yeah okay so we've got a few views to just go through uh shall we cycle through those first and then come back to this one yes got the one i got that so, got... so the meadows well. meadows wild meadows view got the one and then an overview of the pond area and then a close-up of the pond okay great let's go back to the cafe it's where we're standing over here yeah um what i'd like to do is just add some people so somewhere filling up this foreground area would be quite nice um with V-Ray 5, we are now using Chaos Cosmos, which is a collection of 3D models. So there's a whole bunch of 3D people that uh, we are also now using, but we already had a lot of them. Um, so there we go. Drop those in. That's fine. Um, also, I'd quite like to the um, umbrella that's here. I'd quite like to see what that looks like if we copied another one, say, between these two tables. Okay. Okay, that's yeah. great. Now let's move to that second view, the view through the meadows, the, the walkway that passed through over there. Um, the, I mentioned before that the fact that we are using a lot of V-Ray proxies. Uh, this is all forest pack, all the landscape. So it's really helpful for uh, in Vantage for us to be able to look at the, the landscape. I noticed before that we might need to paint in some more wildflowers through there. Okay. Let me just uh, turn off the link to paint faster. So you've disconnected the live link, so you could just paint in 3D Studio. Yeah, and fast. Yeah, because it, it's, well, it would, there'd be a lag um, at the moment. Okay, so you paint that up. Okay, that yeah. looks good. Yep, we've now got nice flowers. Uh, can we go to that other view that was over there? Okay, one second. Okay, the thing I noticed about this, that what time of day is this? Is that, because um, there's quite a lot of sunlight in the foreground. Uh, and could we move that sun so we get some shadow across somewhere across the foreground there? Yeah, right now it's 11 o'clock. I'll change to 12. Uh, maybe 12. No, that, that's too much. Wait, what about somewhere in between? Or 40. Yeah, let, leave it like that. That's fine. Um, okay, last thing, if we maybe have a little bit of a walk around this boardwalk, just so I can sort of demonstrate the, the fact that we can walk around this model and, and inspect that. That's so right. back over to here. Did you add the fish? You, yeah. I can see one's jumping up for catching some uh, bugs. Yeah. So we've got yeah. fish there. Um, so you can walk so again as i sort of mentioned before i'm able to actually walk around uh with a client so you could imagine uh fernando myself um and a client could be on the same call and we can actually now quickly go around and inspect model uh that is i mean the forest pack looks lovely there but that's enough um fernando to show me today thanks for your help all right thank you bye cheers bye Okay, so that shows you the, if you like, the collaborative approach of how my team and myself and me and my clients will collaborate on a daily basis using Vantage. The next thing I want to just quickly talk about is rendering. Now, typically we will use V-Ray or we, we do use Corona, we'll, but for marketing or, or final renders, the, we are discovering that Vantage 
is proving incredibly useful for really, really quick turnaround uh, renders as well. So if I show you the what I mean there, if I hop to the next screen, what we have here is some, some if you like, planning renders. So on the right, uh, rendered in V-Ray, that's using a cloud render farm that cost quite a lot of money. Uh, it took six minutes a frame to render. Now these are just short uh, shots from within a two minute uh, film. But you can see this, this is only used once. It's used for a planning meeting. It's used for a client approval. They look at this, they go, let's make changes to it. And it's redundant. They throw it away, they come back to you and they want to make more changes. So that costs the client a lot of money. It costs you a lot of time and effort to actually upload to the cloud render farm and download. So the alternative we're now using is Vantage. So you can see on the left, the quality is almost the same. It's using, you can see the forest packs in there, the lighting's similar, but it's taking 30 seconds a frame. So that on the left is rendered on one workstation as opposed to sending to a, a cloud render farm. Uh, it's a bit of a, there's a little bit of a workaround to actually get your cameras in but I will show you that uh, on the next slide. And if I just across to that, let's just switch this off so you can actually see. So here's the workaround. Um, it's a way of actually slowing down the recording so that you can actually record a nice smooth camera movement and it's, in the bottom uh, right corner, I've got a QR code to a Vimeo um, link that's actually gonna walk you through that process. So you can look at that properly in your own time, but follow those steps and you'll get the um, similar results to what I showed you before. Um, there we go, right. So what we're gonna cover next is uh, we're gonna jump onto um, the Stacker World project I'm going to show you a few other little tricks and um, fun stuff. Okay, so the final project or case study we're going to look at is Stacker World, which is a downloadable 3ds Max um, tutorial project that comes with the latest issue of 3 Disciple magazine. Um, the I'll put the QR codes to the project and to download the uh, Chaos Vantage VR scenes both day and night at the end of this talk. But let's quickly just jump into it. So I'll share with you the screen. So these are renders uh, from Vantage. The reason I use this over V-Ray, I think I've covered that earlier, um, but they, these were rendered at 4K, took 30 seconds, at, an image to render. Uh, running up to the publication of the magazine, I decided that I wanted to create a two and a half minute trailer for this project. I turned to Vantage because it was I knew that it, I could render these sorts of renders straight out of it. It took 30 seconds a frame. Um, so I set myself a challenge to actually make two and a half minute film in 24 hours. So just want to sort of Go over a little bit of that um, in the last few minutes of this. I'll show you how I created um, the, uh, th these are day shots. So uh, we move that pretty quick into night. And I'm going to show you that in a second of how we actually just swapped out the textures from day scene to night scene. And um, surprisingly, there was no overhead for rendering all the, the global illumination and the glowing lights in Vantage, whereas in V-Ray, so these took 30 seconds of frame to render at 4K. In V-Ray, when I tried looking at it um, just as a comparison, that was taking 10 to 15 minutes of frame. So I stuck with Vantage the whole way. So that's what we're going to talk about now. Um, just showing you some of the renders uh, that were rendered at, at um, 4K. So the project is is 
really promoting a 3D Studio Max Max script that uh, is exclusive to the magazine. You get everything's bundled uh, with the downloadable. Uh, I don't want this to be a, a full on sales pitch, but you can actually download this pretty cheap from um, the magazine. And then the dusk view. So this is all using Forest Pack. Uh, everything there is straight out of Vantage. Right, now we're back in 3D Studio Max. The first thing that we're going to do, uh, we're just going to connect back to the Vantage uh, link. So the live link to Vantage, and you can see there, that's how our day scene looks in Vantage. It's same camera, so, you know, we can still, I can now move around in Vantage and have a look at the scene. It's fully textured, it's textured for daytime. Now if I just jump to a walkthrough mode and walk around that model, uh, this is still live linked to 3D Studio Max. So I can make any changes in this, um, but I have to come out of the walkthrough mode. So this is just showing you um, the live rendering, change to a different camera. Let's just drop down to a different part of the model and have a look around. So you can see, yes, rendering in real time, it's a really good way of referencing your 3D Studio Max model. You can see there's no lag in, in rendering. Um, it's quite a decent sized model, quite big, but this is also available um, in the link that I'm gonna give you at the end of this. So you can actually bring this model, the daytime and the nighttime into Vantage and have a walk around yourself. Okay, back in 3D Studio Max, let's convert the scene over to a nighttime. So first thing we're going to do, unfreeze everything. And then we need to actually jump in and uh, change the um, HDRI lighting. So for this, I'm just going to unfreeze the um, Sinai Illumi layer. You can see we've used Illumi, um, which is an HDRI wizard. Uh, if I open that up from the Sinai toolbar and then select the uh, single HDRI and load that in, uh, I'm going to select the camera that we've used and then import the HDRI. So that's now brought the HDRI in. If I now then jump over to Vantage, you can see we've changed the, the HDRI lighting straight away but the model was still using daytime uh, textures on all the buildings. So now what we want to do is go back into Max and let's swap out all the day textures for night textures. So for that, I'm using Unite, Sinai Unite. Uh, I've gone to the Repath tool and I'm gonna to Repath to Textures Night. I'm gonna select that and that is now going to go through and repath every single texture uh, in the scene to use the uh, night shaders. So you can see what we're now doing. I'm in 3D Studio Max, what I, I'm going through, it, I'm going to, the there's a slight difference between V-Ray um, shaders and how they look in Vantage. So we just need to tweak those a bit, especially from the, the self-illumination. So what I'm doing here, just um, I'm selecting some of the buildings. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going through and I am upping the multiplier on the self-illumination just to give us a nice glow to um, things like windows, to to light. So that, that's how it's starting to look. Um, I'm not going to go through and do every single building, but at the end of this, I'll show you uh, how that looks um, once that's all been applied. It's a really, really quick method of, of setting up, say, like a city or street scene uh, with, with um, your 
night lighting. But I should point out that those shaders were designed for this from the very beginning. Then let's ju jump into the final scene. This is how it looks. Uh, you can see I'm now in a walkthrough mode. So I'm actually walking through the actual scene itself. And it's there's no lag in rendering. We've got all the GI on, the lights, self-illuminated lights are glowing. Um, and it's looking quite Tron-like, if <laughs> if you will. The What's good about this is I can actually now start to use Vantage again as a reference and start to look at how different areas need to be lit with uh, V-Ray lighting in, in 3D Studio Max. So I can hop into, say, like the central area, uh, look around, see where I need to put specific lights or in the case of the bridge it's it's quite dark so maybe what we want to do is add a few more few more um spotlights in there but that's for a different exercise altogether so let's just walk across this bridge uh, by all means when you get to play with this model uh have a walk around um and um yeah enjoy that that is it for changing from daytime to nighttime you can see it's a very very easy process um it's a very fast way of rendering okay so here are the qr codes on the right and uh, download the um, vr scenes on the left you can find out more about the stacker world project okay so that is all from me i think the last thing is to just to wrap up what we've talked about so fast previewing um it's use vantage if you're just wanting to uh, render out camera previews uh, i think a really good sample to quickly show you here is the comparison between 3ds max uh, preview and using vantage uh, so on the left it took 15 minutes to render uh, what essentially could be a, a finished shot um, and the other is a wireframe in 3ds max um, the it's really great if you've got a second monitor to have vantage open to explore your scene so if you're working like we do with a lot of proxies you can actually look at things in real time you can make updates or if you wish you can jump in and walk around your models to explore them further it's fantastic for collaboration, especially in this work from home world where you're wanting to share a model with uh, either your client or um, say one of your team members. So you can actually collaborate really easy together on that. Um, if you're wanting to use it for rendering, uh, we are now using it for uh, well, client renders. Uh, it's proven to be incredibly uh, useful and saves a lot of money, both for us and our clients. And um, yeah, try it. It is fantastic and fun to use. Um, and the I think finally, um, if you're wanting to get hold of me, here's some social media contacts, uh, QR codes again. So use your mobile or cell device, scan those and you can find me on instagram you've got my website you've got the uh facebook and uh linkedin so thank you very much um i'm going to um finish now and i hope you enjoyed that <laughs>